Hey everybody, back with another video. I wanted to do a quick mastering example using a couple different rack extensions, showing you how to go from this to this. Okay, immediately you notice it's louder. That's a definite. Let's look what's under the hood and see what we're dealing with. Got an MP5, stereo splitter for some stereo widening, master bus compressor, which is the C1 Alpha in this case. Using a mastering reverb finishes everything off nicely. Down to a vintage equalizer, we'll AB this and I'll show you what it's gonna do for it. It's quite nice. And then this is the secret to it all, the Kratos 2 maximizer limiter caps off the audio pumps up the volume makes everything clean it's wonderful we'll get there <clears throat> let's start off with this device uh, let's see where we're at again I'll go one by one here and bypass them all so you know what they're what we're all dealing with that's basically the, the raw mix. Start with the lows, do the highs, do the mids. You know how we do it. Let's check this out. Again, you'll, you'll want to push these mid-range ones pretty hard at first just to tell your ear where everything's at. Okay, that's a good start for this. Let's dip out the mids. That's already, that's a nice start. I do have this whole rack uh, tucked away down here so I can compare it when we're done and see if I got some of these settings close. Here's our stereo splitter. I don't like to push this one too hard. What I like to do with this, actually, from a reset position. I'm superstitious or silly enough just to back it off a little bit. I think it sounds just a little better when backed off. So hold down shift and usually get it right around 98%. I know it sounds weird, but uh, push this out to about 170 or 176. It ain't bad. Too much more you're going to mess with your stereo image. And just for my material, this is just my, what I do, I don't deal with the stereo image too much. I've messed with it too much before and you lose your middle channel and you lose your bass. <laughs> To hear the extreme, let's check it. I'm sticking with it right there, I think. That's basically good. Just for example's sake. Let's move on. I like the Master Glue 1 preset. It's not bad at all. 
what I like to do f for this, reset it, master glue one, it's right at about a two to one. I like the knee and the release settings. I like to go all the way wet with it, so it's pretty committal. Let's check out where we're at. I know from using this device that I can pretty much get minus 1875, and it just touches the three, uh, minus three decibels of gain reduction. You wanna give it back right here with the makeup gain, back up to about, you know, three decibels. Already making an improvement. This bad boy here, I like a little bit of mastering reverb, and what I like to do with it is, if we reset the device, move this over to convolution, because I think it's a pretty cool new feature, that's for sure. This is it's already open. It's the refill that you get from the prop site. Impulse responses, echo chamber, lexicon, hall. This first one, even the first one, gives you a nice, more organic kind of space than what you had before. And we'll peel this back so you hear it. It's a, it's a simple preset without much tail already, so you can get away with putting up the decay on this one. The dry and wet, it becomes, it starts to become a kind of compression effect when too much. It smooths everything out to a big degree. You don't want that. Subtle is definitely your friend, especially when mastering. You want, you want to make an already good mix, just a bit louder, maybe a bit wider, and just a bit beefier. That's basically all you want to do with mastering and you want it to be in a certain target loudness and we'll get there in just one second so let's say our mastering reverbs out of the way you want to keep the dry and wet pretty low or the you know the wet pretty low so it's barely detectable let's check out this EQ and let's see what this is going to do for us found I'm a fan of those kind of settings right about there with this mix especially it smooths it out I, I like the character of this EQ uh, it's not something I always do is put route everything through another equalizer but I messed around with this one and I found it to be an improvement let's say it a B in here <laughs> I don't hate that. It's uh, it's pretty smoothed out and sounds uh, has a bit of a professional finish on it. I kind of like it. Now we're going to get to the secret one, the Kratos 2. This is not necessarily the secret one, but it's the finishing touch. Let's go. Right away, I can tell you we're push, putting an extra six decibels of gain on top of this, and the point of a limiter is to cap off the audio. Once you tell it where it caps off at, it will never go louder than that. It creates a brick so you don't ever go over and you don't ever clip. This being, it's an understated size because this is the most kind of important knob of a limiter. It's the ceiling. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's only going to cap it, you know, minus 0.3 decibels. It's not going to go above that at all. 
There's some awesome documentation on the Kawasa site as far as what these do. You want to go over sampling times four with your master version. It's just the way to go. 24 bit, better safe than sorry. These settings are wonderfully set up already. You can mess around with them. I like the defaults, nothing wrong with them. Let's take this down and show what we're doing. <laughs> So I wanted, only wanted to go six decibels with this because what we want to look for on this, here is our dynamic range and our RMS readout. That's our loudness readout. Commercial recording, you want just about minus 11 RMS. That's total, or actually not total, it's average RMS over the whole song. It's the total and average is a slightly different measurement, but uh, that's splitting hairs at this point. What you guys need to be worried about is the RMS and looking for about minus 12, minus 11, because in that range, your dynamic range is still gonna be healthy, which that's what you want. Now, if you know how to use this flower loud loudness meter, how it works is this time window is the measurement over either five seconds, 10 seconds, three or 400. It gives you, you know, an average of what's going on. And if we play this, we'll see that the total RMS is about minus 11. That's actually pushed pretty hot. It's uh, it's good. You can you can go much hotter actually with this Kratos and not have any distortion, which is the hallmark of a good limiter. You want to be able to push it and not get extra artifacts. It's even eleven. It still sounds clean. But let's go back to six and check out our dynamic range. Looks about 11. And minus 11 for that. Now if we look, I have a nifty dynamic range meter here, or graph. That dynamic range of 11 Puts us at, hey, Motorhead, Ace of Spades in 1986. Nice. But this graph is interesting because it shows Metallica with a DR, you know, dynamic range of three. Very loud. Not great to listen to. The, the problem with minimal dynamic range is you can't listen to that stuff for very long without your ear getting totally fatigued. Surprisingly, Pink Floyd comes in 1973 with a dynamic range of just over 10. You know, totally still healthy. This graph can show you a lot. Hmm, no mentions of Bieber. Uh, so yeah, you want to get your RMS at about minus 11. And let's check out the uh, AB one more time on this. Yikes. That's wider, it's better, it's fuller. And the best thing is you're not gonna have any overages with the Kratos on the top. What I wanna do is kick out a little demo file and show you guys in another DAW that these uh, settings actually work really, really well. Okay, guys, back again. I uh, kicked out another version. What we're going to do is send this over to Adobe Audition, and we're going to check out the amplitude st uh, statistics. Don't mind that one. This is our original mix that we started off with. And it's about... It's minus 17 RMS, total RMS on the uh, 
Yeah, on the mix there, which is what you want. If someone's sending you a mix, you want it at about minus 17 RMS. You can actually do stuff with it. Commercial recordings, uh, if I haven't mentioned, are minus 12, minus 11. We're going to get this right up about there. Because when we just exported this, we should be seeing about a minus 11 RMS. And let's load this up. Right on. Scan this. This is, there's our minus 11 or minus 12. The, the way we're going to get the LKFS reading, the minus 14, is to test this using a square wave. It'll actually get it right in that ballpark. There are two different kind of standards for an RMS test. The AES standard is a sine wave. But as we see, here's our total. That's the 14. It's basically the LKFS. That's just letting you know we're double checking everything because in mix, uh, mastering you want, it's quite a scientific thing. Possible clip samples, zero. That's what you want to see it. And that is from the Kratos. It doesn't let anything through. No overs. Sounds wonderful and sounds clean, even at loud volumes. So this isn't a bad mastered track. This is kind of what you want to see. It's got nice dynamic range. It's not a S SpongeBob SquarePants waveform. <laughs> it's just a solid block. Uh, yeah, this is wonderful too. It's letting you know many different measurements. Won't go into all these, but this is uh, definitely a healthy looking master and something to be proud of. And it's all because of the Kratos and a few other toys that put together well make for a nice master. I hope this video went off good. I have to do some editing and I might just make another, but uh, you guys have a great day.